Les Demoiselles de Avignon by Pablo Picasso. The story begins in Barcelona, Spain, 1907. When the night begins, women roam the streets of the red light district, hoping to get picked up by a man willing to pay for sex. Brothels and prostitutes found on every block. During this time, culture would be quickly evolving, forcing women onto the streets in order to support themselves, only to be seen as the blame for the problems in the world. Pablo Picasso, a painter who frequented Avignon, a red light district in Spain, would use his skills to create a painting addressing the women. In order to really understand the artwork, he will need to further study the women in his painting. When depicting these women, Picasso uses the reversed male gaze by having the prostitutes visible, but instead of being for the pleasure of men, they are independent, staring directly at the viewer. For once, the role of the male gaze is challenged, as the prostitutes judge the viewer. The male gaze is the act of depicting women in the visual art and literature from a masculine and heterosexual point of view. Presenting women as objects of the male pleasure characterized by a tendency to objectify and sexualize women. At 243.9 cm by 203.7 cm, this massive painting can be found at the Museum of Modern Arts in New York. This abstracted oil on canvas painting is named Le Timoncel d'Avignon. In English, it translates to the Young Ladies of Avignon. This is Picasso's first attempt at cubism. It features many different planes, mostly distinguished by color. For example, there is green seen on one of the bodies in the paintings. It lets you know that it is a different plane because it's not typically seen on a face or a body. The use of blue in Picasso's painting also represents another plane in his painting. An abstracted painting which features five women, two of which wear African masks upon their face. To the left, there is different shades of brown. Then a woman who is facing the right, she is naked and bares her breast to the viewer. She has a darkened face. In the center, there are two women both staring directly at the viewer. The woman on the left has her hand behind her head and the other is gripping a sheet. She bares her naked and distorted body to the viewer. The woman to the right has both hands behind her back, presenting her bare, distorted breast to the viewer. Her pelvis is covered by a sheet. In the bottom center, there is a distorted table with a bowl of fruit tipping over. The spilling of the fruit represents Picasso's defiance against traditional art. On the right-hand side, there are two women. On the top, there is a woman who is wearing an African mask, and her arms are jutting out, and only her upper half is shown. While on the bottom, the woman is squatting on a rock. She is also wearing an African mask. The background has dark blue shades. His painting uses sharp and geometric lines to create dimension and add shape to the women. The shading also contributes to the women's features. It gives the women a distorted look and creates confidence and mystery. The painting is forcing 3D objects onto a 2D plane. This masterpiece would make a castle challenge his knowledge and perspective of art. He does this by breaking the traditional principles of perspective, composition, shading, and color used in art, forever changing the art world. In this, he would con contribute to the start of modern art and cubism. The African masks are inspired by a recent trip to the museum featuring African masks. Picasso himself said, But I forced myself to stay, to examine these masks. All these objects that people had created with a sacred magical purpose to serve as intermediaries between them and the unknown, hostile forces surrounding them, attempting in the way to overcome their fears by giving them color and form. And then I understood what painting really meant. It is not an aesthetic process, it's a form of magic that interpossesses itself between us and the hostile universe. A means of seizing power by imposing a form on our terrors as well as our desires. This day, I understood that I have found my path.
His mask would go on to be featured in many of his later paintings, inspiring a whole period by Picasso. Now that you know about the painting, I will tell you a little about the painter who did it. But he was not just a painter, he was a sculptor, a printmaker, a ceramist, a stage designer, a playwright, a poet, and an overall leader. He paved the way for Cubism, and he contributed to the invention of Surrealism, Expressionism, Collage Art, Modern modern structure, and several others. Picasso was a chaos prodigy. His talent was discovered early on by his father, who was an artist and professor. He would go on to teach his son the formal elements of art by each seven. He wasn't interested, however, in his father's views of art. He preferred more spontaneous and emotional artwork. Picasso's father would get him into art school. But it wouldn't matter. Picasso would soon drop out and move to France, where he would live his life poor for a while, even going to the to burn his paintings for heat in his home before he comes to his known as today. One of the more important masterpieces that would be done by Pablo Picasso would be Bornica. It was a painting representing the city bombed by Nazi planes during the Civil War. The painting depicts horrors of war. This is me as a constant reminder of the tragedies of war. This is my artwork inspired by Pablo Picasso. It is two women together as one. One of the women is crying while the other one is confident. They are together as one whole out of a broken mirror. I don't know why I came up with this, but it kind of just spoke to me and it randomly happened.